from all of you, Nana here, and then we are in the next day's session on this standard costing. So we have completed our average costing, that is a perpetual average as well as actual cost, which is a first in first out cost. So both of them are completed. Now we are going to go into the standard costing. So go on and have a look at it. So uh, let me, what do they, <clears throat> No, log in now. Get back. So maybe we'll start our activity. We'll now have a look at the theory in this one. So go there and then go to the fusion procurement documentation in which you will now find one P2P process. So I'm now going to have uh, the item cost is $10. Uh, and then uh, now this is a corona period and so supplier is now asking one dollar extra so we don't want to update the item cost because this is a temporary increase and so i'm not going to increase the item cost at all i'm not going to keep it as 10 and then i will now make a purchase order of 11. so once when i make a purchase order there is no accounting at all on this so once when the purchase order is completed no accounting is entered actually so once when you make a gate is uh, the real accounting starts so go there and then the receiving inspection is now going to be hit once when you receive it, the thousand quantities at 11,000 at the PO price and not at the item cost price actually. The contra entry will be inspection, inventory accrual, that will be hit. And then once when you deliver it, uh, you will now have the PPV also coming into picture. This PPV will come only for the standard costing and not for the perpetual average as well as actual cost. It will not come, but only for the standard costing it will be done. So inventory will be hit at uh, the item cost at 10,000. And then PP will be hit a thousand, and then the receiving inspection gets knocked off upon delivery. And remember, there is no accounting that takes place in EBIS. We have a concept of a perpetual accounting. Here it is not so. So otherwise, you push it into costing. No accounting takes place actually. So it will be a simple transaction as far as EBA, uh, your supply chain is concerned. And then you have to push it into costing, and then only the accounting takes place. So let us now create an item, and then we go there. <coughs> go there so i will now uh before which we will now go on and have a look at uh, the profiles which you have created we'll now have a look at it. the setup and maintenance and then look at the profiles which you have created now we will now first have a look at the default cost profiles which you have created so it is a managed cost profile so we'll go to the managed default cost profile and then we'll now have a look at it so we have created one default cost profile for every cost book, cost or combination. We go to the manage default cost profile. Hey, my voice is clear, isn't it? Okay. Yes, Nana. Okay. Yes, it is clear. It's clear. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah, very clear. No problem. And the instance is also fast. Too. Okay. Yeah, instance is also fast. That is the biggest thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we go then query. There will be only one default cost profile for every cost book, cost or combination. So we already created. And then uh, that we are going to do it. And then open it up on, we'll select it and then click on edit. And then this can be uh, changed over a period of time as, as the needs come in. So I have one asset cost profile. I have one expense cost profile. And then I have one consigned cost profile, which can be the default section. So I not set up anything. And then uh, expense itself is totally a lab access for you. We are now done only on the asset cost profile. So this asset cost profile says what? It's a, basically a perpetual average. It's a perpetual average. There's a cost method. <clears throat> now, uh, you can override this method at the item level. At the item level, you can very well override. So I will now cancel it. So I, I will now go to override this profile. Actually. So it's a perpetual average. I'm going to override it. So I have already created a yeah, cost profile for sand loans. I'll say manage percentage. Cost percentage profile percentage. Zero. I have already created right? manage item cost profile. If you go on and see, not item cost profile, sorry. <clears throat> manage. Uh, uh, let's say uh, manage cost profile options, manage cost profiles. Yeah. So if you go on and see, I have already created a standard cost profile over here now. <sighs> go on and query for this now, fine. J10, enter now. So we're going to query, so once we query, we have already created one for the standard actual. So one is what, the standard cost profile. So uh, I have an expense cost profile, I have an uh, asset cost profile. Asset cost profile is now made for what? Your uh, perpetual average, you know. So that is the default cost profile also. And then I know made one for the standard cost. The standard cost, if you go on and query, you know, have a look at it. What else? So the, the costing method is standard cost. That is what it is. And nothing else is there. And go there. Everything is okay. <clears throat> so this is okay. And then give a cancel now. Fine. I will now create an item and then assign this profile to my item actually. That is what I'm going to do. I click on the now. 
So in the meantime, what happens? I will now open up multiple pages on this one. Duplicate, duplicate, so that uh, we can even uh, do other activities also parallelly and directly click on the duplicate. One more, one, so I will not take it up. <coughs> right click on the duplicate. So that other activities can be simultaneously done. Fine, multitasking. Fine, that will be very fast for you. Know, fine. Click on that. So I will now go on and create an item, and then I am going to assign it. Assign the profile. Click on it. So as per the plan, what I am going to do is, I will now make the item, uh, what I will the selling price. Okay, let us say the purchase price. I am going to make it as 9 now. So it was, uh, the, the item was created in the hydraulic period. And so what I'm going to do is I will not create an item. Fine for that. So let me create an item with the price of nine. <coughs> the risk price is nine. That is the purchase price actually. And then I'm going to make a modification on the purchase orders actually. Once when I make it, click on it and go there. I will not go on the an item. <coughs> so I'm going to use my master arc. J10 and then zero is my master arc. J10 one is my child arc. I'm going to it. I'm not getting it, man. Okay, okay, I'm fine by which it goes on. The warning is okay, we can ignore it because somebody is working on the EFF actually, the extended flux fields. And so it is not a deployed. And so you're getting a warning, man. Ignore the warning. Click on yes and go ahead. So here for this one, I will now create one item. Okay? Let us say <coughs> a simple item. I'm going to create a point. Jaden underscore 3 3. I'm going to make it a point. So 3 3 is item. I'm going to put on the description. I go down and then in the specifications, I'm going to give a list price of nine. So since the item has been created long back, so we are using that price actually. And that will be defaulting onto the purchase orders actually. And then you can even well overwrite. The price is nine now. I go there. I go to the associations and then I will now associate as a child arc. Go to the actions and then go to select an ad and then I'm going to associate with the child arc. It's a J10 and then one is a child arc. Zero is a master arc, one is a child arc. I'm selected and click on apply and done. And by which this is now getting completed. Go there. I will now save and close by which the J10 underscore 33 is not done. The next activity is what? We have to set up the uh, cost price. So I will now set up the cost price to 10 actually. My item price, list price is 9. And then I'm going to set up the cost price to 10. I will now click on the home icon. Go there. I will now go to the what's called supply chain execution. Supply chain execution and then I go to the uh, cost uh, cost accounting. I go to the cost accounting. Supply chain execution and then cost accounting. I'm going to the effect on it. I will now create what a profile. So before we create a scenario, fine, uh, I have already explained what exactly is the scenario. I will now show you what is the scenario. <clears throat> In the cost scenarios, there will be multiple scenarios for you. <clears throat> uh, there is a file called the cost scenario. So standard cost scenario. The 60th file is the standard cost scenario. I'll open it up. <clears throat> that would be all right. Now open it up. So here, uh, I am no manufacturing car. So I am not going to use labor. Fine, assemblers, builders, fitters, etc., etc. There are huge manpower will be involved. And then uh, the cost of manufacturing under labor scenario is what? $2,000. <clears> so, but if you go for robots, robots are going to replace uh, all the workers actually. Fine, it will be very fast also. And then the cost of manufacturing will be $1,500. But initial expenses of installing the robots will be very high. So the management will now think over it about which method is okay for them now. And accordingly, they will now make multiple scenarios. For example, there is a problem in the robots and then they are not working. So immediately switch over to labor. So what we will do is we will now create both the what's called the cost, the labor scenario cost as well as the robot scenario cost. And then whichever I'm using it, I will update. It. So the moment I update it, in EBS, we have got a concept of frozen cost. Fine, here there is no such frozen cost. The, uh, when you update it, that got that cost get published, and that will be the cost for it. And so from that, uh, we can very well derive the margin. Fine. Margin is a very important one. So the gross margin, sale minus cost is a gross margin. So that is very important for the sales. So the sales team is now going to see the product costing, and then they will now accordingly set, set up the selling price actually. So here we are going to use the robots on. So in, you will have plenty of scenarios. Say, for example, in one of the companies, uh, they were uh, in the summer, they are going to cool the raw materials and then feed it into the uh, what's called your BIP, uh, uh, basically. So it has to be at 20 degrees. Uh, once more, since it has to be at 20 degrees, at summer, the temperature is very high, more than 30 degrees. And so they cool it to bring it to 20. And in the winter, they heat it. It goes to even 6 degrees. So they heat it to six, 20 degrees and then they feed it. So the heating cost and then the cooling cost are different, actually. So they have a scenario of what? Uh, uh, summer cost and then winter cost. So likewise, there will be so many, uh, what happens, there will be reasons finding, then you will now find so many scenarios uh, coming up. So every scenario will have its own cost actually. And then the moment you publish it, that becomes the standard cost of the product. So we will now go there and then uh, we will now create one scenario. 
I don't go like what. So I know go to the go to the managed cost scenarios. I know in the cost area, I know that's called managed cost scenarios. And then I'm going to create a cost scenario for this. Click on cost model. Let me create a scenario. <clears throat> so I normally uh, begin everything with my prefix of uh, J10. I don't know like what. So J10 is the one. And then I will now say labor. Labor. <laughs> I only created one scenario. Okay. So labor scenario. So go there. So I am now going to use labor for costing a product. I will not put my cost or over here. And remember, everything is cost or cost book dependent actually. So go there and then put it. And if you have multiple cost stocks or customer cost book, they are do accordingly. And then go there. Everything is there. Effective data. I am going to give it. Nothing like that. I am going to create it. Fine. That's it. My scenario gets created. My labor scenario too is now getting created. Fine. You are saving close. It is now created. Now I am going to associate items to the scenario. There may be multiple items which can be associated to one scenario. And then the bottom one is what for manufacturing equipment. So when you go there, you'll understand. It. Uh, manufacturing is not covered in this training. I will not start with them going for it. So the bottom areas are manufacturing. I'm not shown it. So it shows you graphically also. So you can even show us a graph about how the labor scenario is done. So click on it, select it. And then I'm going to what good actions. And then I'm going to specify the standard cost for it. You go to the manage in the actions area. I go to the manage standard cost. <clears throat> so manage standard cost of one. Go and query. Find the labor scenario two. Previously we created one. Click on plus and then I'm going to attach an item over here. So go the item is J10. Let's go three three is a one. Can give it up. The validation unit I have created only one validation unit. That's sufficient. I have not done for expense and consignee. Only for the asset I have done it. Fine. Asset valuation unit I'm going to put over here. And then I'm going to put the standard cost. Fine. Click on standard cost. And in our mapping set, I have mapped every of J10 actually. So we had to use one of them only. So if you use something else, it will not work at all. So J10 item price, whatever your mapping set has got a cost element. Mapping sets cost element, which are now mapped to your cost component. That only you had to use now. Fine. So map, mapping set cost element to cost component. So here I will now put a stand. Fine. Even though the price on the item is now list price is nine, I'm not going to modify it to what 10 now. 10 is the one. So click on save and close by which uh, I have now completed what? Creating the standard cost. So the moment I create it, whatever, it will be coming into in process. And then I'm going to publish it. So the moment I publish it, it will now get published. So that becomes the actual cost. It is equivalent to frozen cost. The moment you publish it, it is equivalent to frozen cost of EBS. So it's not done. So if you have any doubts, other time, immediately ask me. So it's not done. So we are now creating the standard cost of it. Give it done now. Come out of it. Come to the main page. And then from there, I will now publish it. Select it and then we'll publish it and go back for it. So publishing is nothing but update standard cost. So we click on the update standard cost, your concurrent will be running. So your ESS job will be running. Fine, click on submit now. So the ESS job has to complete. My 876 job and go back for it. We'll now go on and have a look at the 876 job. Go, there, go, there. go to the place, go to the tools, and then you go to the schedule to process and then look at the 876 job. And that will be telling you about whether it has got completed or not. So once when it is completed, your uh, cost gets published actually. And that becomes a What's called the standard cost of the product. So no working upon now. So it is succeeded. Fine. Update standard cost success. Go there, go back. And then here, if you go on the requery on this, the new will now become what? No, see this now, right? Labor on. So it is now the status is new. It is completed successfully. Labor soon. Fine. If you go on and look at the standard cost, the standard cost would have been published actually. You click on the manage standard cost. You can now see that the cost is published. It is published. So this becomes the standard cost. So if you want to have the robot scenario, then you update that robot scenario, then automatically what happens is that that will become get published actually. So you can even remove it and then do it. So at any point in time, whatever you publish, that becomes your standard cost of the product. So that will be the way you are going to make a change. Now let me create a purchase order for eleven dollars. For a unit price of eleven dollars, go there. Click on it. So I'll not I'll go and get a purchase order. <clears throat> go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders and then let me create a purchase order for eleven dollars. <clears throat> click on it. Go there. Click on create order. I'm going to create order. Go there. It is J10. Sub one. Click on create now. I'm not going to get an order. The purchase order is not getting created. So we'll now make it for eleven dollars actually. Okay. Or I will not make it as eleven point five. So it will be more appropriate actually. My account plus now. Let us now make it for eleven point five. So it will be more granular basically for us now. So when you make a receipt, the receipt will be hit only at the PO cost. Fine. The receipt accounting will be at the PO cost. So go there. It is G ten three three. The item. 
So popular day, wait a moment, you know. I will go on to call this. And then I will overrate the price. The list price of $9 will be coming over here. I'm going to overrate you $10. $11, right? $100. And now the supplier is asking what? Not nine, but he's asking 11.5. $11.5 so he is asking 11.5 so since it is a temporary phenomena of a purchase i am not updating the item cost now. so i will not allow the ppv to hit now so the cost accountants will be continuously monitoring the ppv of every sales every sales or every purchase order and then once when the accumulation has gone beyond 50000 that means what this becomes a real price of a product so afterwards, they will not decide, make a decision. This 50,000 is an arbitrary one. So they will now accumulate. They will now see the cumulative PPVs, which are hit on various purchase orders. If it has crossed beyond a limit for a particular item, then it means what? It is really the price has gone high. And so they will now update the item cost so that your sales minus cost will now reflect you the real margin actually. So we'll now say the corona period is 11. Afterwards, we, th we thought that it will now come back to 10, but it is not coming at all. So they will now update it. So cost price, let us say I'm not going to sell it at 17 rupees, $17. So 17 minus 10, 7 is a gross margin. Uh, so, but uh, actually we have spent 11 and not 10 actually. So since the 10 is a temporary measure, we are allowing the PPV to hit and then if it is a significant enough, we will now write off the PPV. PPV is written off. Fine. It will be written off to your expense account and then afterwards uh, we will now adjust the item cost. That is the way it does. So you go there, click on it. I will not go on then go to the schedules and then give a date. No, date is a must. So either the promise date or need be date is a must. We go there and then provide this date. So one of the date is a must. So the promise date is a date given with the supplier. The need be date is a date given by the requester. So one of the date is a must. And then if both the dates are present, the supplier is supposed to honor uh, the commitments between these two dates. No? Fine. Between the requester delivery date and the promise date. Fine. They gave date given by the requester actually. Fine. But again, if it is beyond this, no, fine. When it is the 24th and this 30th, if it is not supplying next month, 15th only, the system will not stop you from doing it. But you will not shout on the supplier. Fine? You will not shout on the supplier. They are, you are given on date of 30th and then you are giving on 15th, next month, 15th. So what is this? So he will not give an explanation. So the system do not have any controls on the date, but one of the date is a mandate. So click on save now and I'll submit it. And 10th purchase order is now getting created. So we will now go on and receive it. So 10th, we are going to receive it now. <clears throat> so it is now getting submitted. So we have now made it for J10 underscore 33 is item. For which you are now getting submitted. Go there. You will now go to this place. You will now go to the what? Uh, supply chain execution. And then we will go to the inventory management. And then now go to the inventory management. And we will receive it. And if you go there, you know, still working upon the summit is going on. Go there. In the meantime, we will now go there. We will now go to the inventory management. And then we will now receive the item of J10 33. 100 quantities. We will now go to this place. <coughs> So there are five options are available in the inventory management. And then we have already given the data access for everything. Now we will go to the receive stack. Click on the receive expected shipments and then go on and have a look at it. Still submitting is not submitted. So once when it is submitted, it becomes, uh, it will be approved actually. Fine. We are now given automatic approval for the purchase orders. And so it will not have any problem. Fine. The document is now submitted for approval. It will be getting approved. Fine. Go to the place. And then query the purchase order number 10. 10, we are going to query. We are tap. It's still not approved. Fine. We are waiting for it to get approved. So once when it is approved, we are going to make a gate reserve. So the GRN gets created upon a gate reserve. And then once when it is completed, we will now deliver it. We will now perform a put away into the inventory now. <clears throat> it is still undergoing approval now. The process is now going on. So once when it is come, we give a search, it will be coming at the bottom. Click on, click on. Come, come, come. <clears throat> So it has to come now. <clears throat> hey, come on. Not a come. No, in the meantime, I'm going to go there. Any other party, anybody has uh, submitted what yeah, approvals or not, we'll not go on and have a look at it. <laughs> if somebody has submitted the approval, we have to bypass the approval. Like, yeah, there are too many. <laughs> yeah. People are working on this now. And so somebody made a one set no approval, actually. So I'm going to go there and see whether it goes to open or not. So it's open now. Fine, good. It got and go there. Click on. Click on such. Come on. Aya on the cheek. Click on Go there. Then click on search now. We are going to make a gate reserve. So we are going to make a gate reserve for this one. So a GRN gets created upon gate reserve and then it will be delivered to the inventory. So in the meantime, whatever they know, go there. We are going to push the transaction into receipt area as well as the cost area. Fine, go there. So go there. It's called transfer transactions. 
receiving the cost. So we'll now perform a transfer transaction receiving the costing now. So that you can know. So click on OK. <clears throat> and then before submitting it, let us now receive it. Select and then click on receive. You're going to receive it actually. Okay. And then perform a receipt. So while you're receiving, the sub inventory cannot be given because it is a gate receipt. So sub inventory information cannot be given during receive actually. <clears throat> Go to the next level. We'll see. A goods receipt note will be getting created at the gate, and then that will be basically followed everywhere. Actually. And then you cannot put any sub unit at all because it's receiving, so nothing will be coming over here now. We will now go on and create a receipt. I'm going to keep on creating a receipt. And then during receipt creation, uh, we can uh, make a lot of value additions to the receipt factory. Right? So we can even give all the information so that uh, you will be able to get a lot of information when you want uh, taking a report. Right? So that report will be helping you a lot in analyzing the way in which uh, the supplier is supplying. So all the information can be tracked in a creator zip column. <clears throat> so the monitor is not ready. I'm going to submit it, but before which what happens, we have to perform the receipt actually. Receive and then deliver. So once when these two things are completed, we can go ahead on this. Again, the instances suddenly become slow now. <laughs> so it really yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was fast. It was going good till now. Yeah, suddenly. Yeah. Suddenly it has gone down the fine speed. Yeah. You must be lucky enough to have the instances to be fast actually. I know. No, seriously. Because just a simple receipt will take that much time that the customer will be so angry. <laughs> exactly. It is not yeah. a good at all. What is this? Over oh, there, it's still going inside now. Now, yes, yeah. oh, yeah. So when I click on the show result quantity, it will not show you how much is going to be received. After that, submit cannot be And click on create. I have not done this, okay? And that is why it's not waiting. Actually, I don't do the quantity at all. So that is why it was waiting there. And maybe otherwise, it may not be waiting for this much of a time, actually. I'm not given the quantity. So shipment number is what? One, two, three. And then the packing slip number is four, five, six. And then the shipping method, oh, number of units is three. And then the way bill number, fine, Jimmy check on. And go the bill of lighting is and then you all the things. So these informations will give you a lot of information for you to what happens. Uh, monitor this product process now. Fine. When you take a report, we can even take up on all these things. So we are now submitting it now. <coughs> so receipt is now getting created. So once when the receipt is completed, we'll now put away. Fine. You'll now find the GRN number coming up on this now. The receipt number is a GRN number. So once when the GRN number is ready, uh, we can very well what happens, uh, do a uh, put away now. <coughs> So in the bottom also is not showing you all the things like that. 1006 is the GRN number. Click on OK now, fine. We will now put away on the GRN number. In our company, it is a very strict practice not to query on the PO number once when the consignment crosses the gate, actually. So every company will be having his own glossary. I will now perform a put away now. So we have to query only on the GRN number. When I'm writing a mail to the inventory judges, I say this GRN number has got so-and-so issue or something like that. I will be referencing only the GRN number and not the PO number. That is my practice in our company. Many companies are practicing the same thing. We have put and also, uh, there can be multiple GRN for one. Of course, so yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So it is easy to. Yeah. So it is easy to. The reason that they are yeah. only on the GRN. Good, good, good. Correct. So yeah. They consider only a GRN and not the PO number. Sure. Correct. I will now populate. There is only one sub unit for me. I will now populate the sub unit over here. <clears throat> click on it and then click on submit. So both the clicks on submit by which both the receipt and then the put away are completed. Now we can very well run our transactions basically. We will not transfer transactions to costing it. The put away is now created. So the transaction is now created. Okay. We will now go to this place and then go there. Click on submit. Fine. It is called transfer transactions receiving to costing. I'm not submitting it. So once one is completed, I will not run the transfer transactions from inventory to costing. So both the things are now completed. So what happens? This information is now pushed into costing as well as this is also I'm going to push it into costing. And then we'll now create the distribution. Distribution creation is the one. In EBIS, the distributions are perpetually getting created as and when the transactions are completed on the supply chain itself. Here it is not so. Only upon push the distribution, it becomes eligible for the creation of distribution. We'll now complete it from that. So click on the schedule new process. I will now transfer it from inventory to costing. Costing and we're going to find transfer transaction. So there is a second one, which are pushing it into the costing area. It is going to the interface tables of costing. Remember, here cost org is a must find. So once when you push it, they will now land up on the interface area. Thank you, Consul. They will now land up on the interface area. So I'll go there. This is now completed. We will now go to the receipt area. This is now completed. So we don't need to have the screen down. So there is no running. We'll now wait for the concurrent to complete. Now find transfer transaction inverted cost. 
no running, no go there. So we will now go to the receipt area now. You go to the supply chain execution, and then you go to the receipt accounting. So receipt accounting, I'm going to wait now for the point. Here, I will now create what? A receipt accounting distribution specifically. So by this time, both the pushes are now completed. So distribution creation is a very, very important one from a supply chain perspective, not accounting. Accounting is not that important now. It is running now. Fine. Let us now complete everything both now. Let us wait for it to complete. It's completed. Thank you. We will now go and then create the receipt accounting distribution. Create receipt accounting distribution I'm going to create. And remember for which the GL period must be open, otherwise it will not be possible. But costing period need not be open. As such. For the, the GL period must be open, otherwise it will not work at all. I will not submit it. So once when I submit it, you can now see 909 is the one. It will be hitting at the PO price. It will be hitting at the PO price. <clears throat> so here you will now have what? The inspection account will be debited and then the accrual will be credit capture. Once when you see this distribution, right? accrual will be credited. So wait for it to complete now. So credit accounting distribution is now coming. <clears throat> Well, now open up this now. You will now see on the. You will now again go to the receipt only. So click on it. You will now go to the supply chain execution and then uh, you will now go to the receipt accounting and then we will now review the receipt accounting distribution. Click on it. You are going to review it. So click on the review receipt accounting distribution. Go there. Item is J10. So 33 three is the one. So let us now wait for this concurrent to complete now. So here yeah, is now importing it. So we have pushed it into the interface tables and then we are now importing it from the interface to the base tables of receipt account. That is happening now. So it, this has spawned this child and then once when it is completed, the parent also will be getting completed now. So once when it is completed, now it's completed, now parent will run now. The child gets spawned upon this. <sighs> so it's passed and then again, uh, uh, create receipt accounting distribution sub process is now running. We'll wait for it to complete. So once it is completed, we can go and then query this and see what. So the sub process has to get completed. So once it is completed, the receipt accounting distribution is created. So it will now create two lines of distribution, one for the receiving inspection at the PO price and then accrual again at the PO price. Accrual is nothing but a notional liability. It indicates to the management about how much of money is going to be paid. And then for the receipt accounting, accrual is a big one, the big topic for the purchase managers. And then you already seen it on the Perpetual average find how important it is while demonstrating the perpetual average. I demonstrate everything. Everything is now complete. All are succeeded. You go there. I will now make a query on this. Now you will now see whether the distribution is now created or not. So, distribution creation is a very important one from the purchasing point. Accounting is not important from our side. Distributions are processed. You know, see the distribution and then it will give you all the information. The purchase order number is 10. I go there. Inventory item is this. And go the supply is this, and then everything you now the receipt number is this, the GR number is this. So everything is not shown over here. Go down and then have a look at it. So you can now see the, the purchase order cost is 11.5. So it will be hitting at this place. Go there. The cost is what purchase order cost. We click on the distribution, you can now see how it is not done. So you can now see the receiving inspection is basically debited, and then your accrual is credited actually. Accrual is getting credited. The remaining or for other things, but taxes and duties, no, there is no taxes and all. So receiving inspection, the PO price is now hit and then the accrual is now done. And accrual is getting credited over here. Now. That's it. So having done this, we'll now go to the cost accounting and then we'll now we'll go to the cost accounting directly. We'll now go to the cost accounting. The receipt accounting is now completed. We'll now go on and perform the cost accounting. Go there. You go to the cost accounting area and then here we're going to see this one. So you go to the cost accounting. So here, if you go and then see the item cost, it will not come because the distributions are not created. You go there, review item cost and then have a look at it. You won't be able to find the cost now. Uh, is the item is what? J10. So three, three, the one thing you would have, and then click on search. So you won't find anything at all, this place. <clears throat> Searching for it. So, because distribution is not created. So we'll now go on and create a distribution. So we'll now go on and create, create cost accounting distribution. It is on a run control, which you already created. So we'll now use the same run control, J10. Starts with JSON and then query for it now. So the big process actually. <clears throat> so we will now click on the schedule process. We have already made it to what uh, the cutoff date is thirty uh, first of August actually. So everything, whatever is there, will all be coming now. So click on schedule process. So click on submit. 
So 918 is a concurrent, will be a big concurrent actually, will be like running for a long time. Right? So we have to wait till the concurrent gets completed. So once when the concurrent gets completed, <coughs> we can now see. So 918 is a concurrent, which will be giving you. So here, when you deliver it, the PPP will be hit at what the difference. You now it was 11,500 and then the 10,000. So 1,500 will be hitting the PPP account actually. And the gate entry gets knocked off. And then after the two stages of accounting, you will have what? Only accrual to charge account or inventory valuation account. Charge account from a purchasing perspective and then inventory valuation account from a financial perspective. Then afterwards, you relieve the accrual by creating an invoice. So once when you create invoice, and it, it gets relieved. And then you'll be having the IPV coming into picture. So in abroad, uh, if a purchase order is at 11 rupees, the supplier can even uh, raise the invoice for 13 also. So in which case, the 2000 will be hitting the IPV. But in India, it's not allowed. India, uh, suppliers can create an invoice only on the PO price. They have to amend the PO if, if at all the price has gone. Whereas in abroad, it is allowed. So we can do it. But normally, the IPV will be hit when you are doing on multiple currencies, actually. Let us say, my functional currency is INR, and then my purchase order is in USD. So there will always be a fluctuation which will be happening. And so that difference will be hitting the IPV, actually. Whenever a fluctuation happens in the currency, there will be. So, this is very much possible in abroad. Here, it is not possible. Then, afterwards, he is going to claim for the freight, miscellaneous expense taxes, and then put together the liability gets created. So, once when you perform an accounting for this, you will now find the AP liability committee picture. Fine. This is called a notional liability, and this is the actual liability. AP liability is actual liability. Accrual is a notional liability. So, once when the liability is created, after the three stages of accounting, after the three stages of accounting, after the first two stages, we have what? Accrual to charge, and then now, what about the third stage? What about the, uh, the accrual gets knocked off, and then you'll be having invoice price, and then you'll be having that is now getting knocked off with the liability. And so you'll be having what your material account AB liability or the inventory valuation, the liability will be the accounting entries which are left actually. And then you will now perform a check issue, and then so once it is done, the, uh, the liability gets cleared, and then the cash clearing is getting hit. So after the fourth stage of accounting, uh, you will have what your uh, material, material account or inventory valuation account to cash clearing. And then using cash management, when you perform a reconciliation, the cash clearing gets relieved and then the cash gets settled. So after all the five stages of accounting, you will have only the charge account to cash account or in other words, uh, inventory valuation to cash account with the remaining entries for analysis. The, in, uh, the inventory valuation to cash account is for the financial accounting. And then the charge account to cash account is for purchasing accounting. So they will be analyzing it actually. What is happening? So we'll now go there and then how to get from the account. So by this time, or they have been completed. The create cost accounting distribution made have completed. Ah, oh, still running. So create cost accounting distribution is end of the morning. On the other day, uh, one of our students told that it doesn't matter even if it ends in the morning. It is not really really a big problem actually. So that is what he's saying. So we'll now go there and then review this. So click on save and close and we'll now review the cost accounting. So click on done now. You got to review. So go to the Review cost accounting distributions. So click on it. I will now quit my cost. Or fine. I will now put the item over here. Eight and underscore three three is the one. So click on search. You're going to search for it. So once we search for it, you'll find out this thing is coming. <clears throat> so the item cost is going to come up. So you can now see it is now fully costed. It will now come. Fine. Item is now getting fully costed. So remember, fine, uh, fully costed. Item is not fully costed, but not at accounted actually. The purchase order is a fine. Everything is not coming on here. And if you go down and see, your PPV would have been hit now. Fine. Go to the cost distributions. Right? Click on it. The one. So click on the cost distributions. You can now see the PPV coming in the picture. So go there. So here, uh, inventory valuation to receiving inspection is only coming, but the PPV is not getting reflected over here. <clears throat> Where it will reflect here, I don't know. Why oh, it is not reflecting over here now? The PPV is not getting referred over, you know. Mm, it's fully costed. So it says what? Inventory valuation is relieved and the receiving inspection is not credited. But I have to get the PPV also coming into picture. The PPV has to come into picture. Come on. In the cost information, if you go on and see. So here it is now saying, uh, PO cost is only shown over here. Fine. Cost compromise item price. PO cost is now 11.5. The cost distribution. Let us now create what happened the journal entries over here and then see the transaction because there's nothing actually. There won't be any error at all. And then go to the journal entries we had to create it. So let us now create the journal entries and then see whether the PPV is getting hit or not. The PPV is not hit. I don't know why it's so. 
we are now having the cost also going over. So it is not showing me on the distribution, the cost information. It shows you what the cost source is PO. Fine with that, that is what it is showing. Let us now have a look at the item price, standard cost. Let us now have a look at the standard cost for it. Whether that has got changed or not. Let us now have a look at it. What are the managed costs on it? Let us now query your cost scenario. Is the label scenario too? No. JTEM. Let us go to law. And then click on search. The label scenario too. So go there. I will not select and then go to the actions and go to the standard cost on this now find manage standard cost. That should not change at all, in my opinion. Standard cost is still okay. Man. Now let me create the accounting and then see whether the PPE is now getting hit or not. Let us not go there. Let us not create the accounting and then see. And then review item cost is only there. Fine. Now go and have a look at the cost now. Review cost accounting distribution. I will now go to the review item cost now. This place, let us not query the item. Number. So J10 underscore 33 is the one thing you would have on the click on search number. That should not come as 11.5, it should come as only 10 actually. No, because distributions are created. So it is 11.5, come on. How come it has got changed? Why it has not hit the variance at all? It has to hit the variance actually. It has to hit the variance. And then at the PO price, it has now come over here now. Fine. Oh God, I understood it. <laughs> I made a mistake actually. I made a mistake. So let us now correct the mistake actually. I have not changed the cost profile to standard costing. That is a mistake. Got it, fine. So I have not changed the profile to cost. I will not duplicate it. And that is why it is now still an average costing. And so it got averaged out. So that is a mistake. Good people. Let us now correct the mistake actually. So we have to correct the mistake. I have not changed the item cost profile at all. What is the double maintenance? I not change it to the standard cost flow. Even though everything is there, I have forgotten to change the cost profile to this one. We will now go to the manage cost profile. Go to the search now. <clears throat> manage so item cost profile. So here I have not changed it actually. Let us now create it. Fine, I have to create it. Now change it. So cost organization is J10 and then you adapt. And the cost book is J10 and then you adapt. Item is what J10 underscore 33 is the one over there. And then now, once when you give the item, what happens? All these things will be getting enabled. Fine, all the three will be getting enabled. Fine. So click on drop it down and then click on search now. And then you'll be registered. Click on search now and you will search it. Select it and then click on OK. <clears throat> and that's it. Oh, it's not coming at all. Oh, the item is already transacted. So if an item is already transacted, it will not allow you to make a change at all. Fine. Remember, item cannot be changed. If it is already done, you cannot change it. So you only have to what? Uh, create one more item and then do it. Now. Mistakes, mistakes. <laughs> At least whatever we are understood about why it has happened. Now. I will not get a new item now and then do it. So go there. Go to the what's called. Go back on this now. <clears throat> I go to the product management and then I go to the product information management. So they are already there or you out? Yes, sir, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. I'm just on mute. <laughs> I made yeah. a mistake here now. Right? So let me create yeah. a new item and then do it now. Yeah, yeah, we can, yeah. I just on mute only. Please. Okay, that doesn't matter. Create it now. So let me get a new item and then I'll do it. Because that has got average out. Fine. That is a problem. Yes, yes. Correct. Right. It has got average out. So whereas in this place, it will not get average out. So okay. the activity okay. is what? When I was talking, I forgot on the right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I was seeing what the, why the PPV is coming, coming, coming. It's not coming at all there. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. That's so item is J10 underscore. I will now say 4 4 this time now. I will take a copy it and then put the description. What I, I will now go to the specifications and I will now give a price at nine. So go to the purchasing. And remember, once when the transaction happens, you cannot make a change at all. Remember, right? okay. the cost profile okay. cannot be changed. Right? So it is exactly similar to what we have in EVS. EVS is a dog level. Here we can even have it at the item level. And then okay. EVS has okay. got what one uh, default cost profile has been reduced and then that is not there in EVS at all. And in the fusion, we have this now and that is not there in EVS. You go to the associations and then let me associate the child or good no. actions and then go to self net and then let me associate the child or no. and then put the child. No. So it is nine dollars as a list price, and then I'm going to create a purchase order at 11.5 now. And then before okay. I create the purchase order, let me set up the cost profile. And there is a mistake I made now. So yeah, the standard the cost profile, yeah. The standard cost profile has to be made now. So it's not done. Fine with that part. I will now go to this place. Fine with Item is created. 4 4 is now created. I go to the setup and maintenance, and then I will now set up the cost profile actually. <clears throat> go to this place. And then click on search now. Manage 
with a cost profile. So go there. I will not go to the cost profile. Okay, no. And then let me create a cost profile. No problem. So JTEN, and then you tap. <coughs> and then it is JTEN, and then you tap. Item is drop it down, and then make a search now. So click on search. So it is JTEN. 4 4 is the one for which we are now going to create a cost profile now. Click on OK now. So the moment I put it down, all the three are getting enabled. Actually. So I will not put JTEN and then I will not put the standard cost profile on this. Fine. This overrides the actual uh, the, the actual one. Fine. This actual cost profile is a uh, perpetual average. I will not choose this. <laughs> the asset profile is a, a perpetual average. Actual cost is what? Your first in, first out cost, which I have already demonstrated. First in, first out cost. Another little bit demonstrated. You were there on the train, no, na? Okay. Asset cost I was like, yeah, I was, yeah, I was doing, yeah. The recording side was doing. The same recording. Now the yes. item will now follow the standard cost profile. Not seven close. So after having set the profile of this item, then we have to go and then set up your standard cost. But standard cost can be set. It is allowing you, fine, even if it is not a standard cost item, it is allowing you to create it. Fine, fine. So go there, click on it. I will now go to this place. I will now use the same scenario and then add the item. Mm -hmm. One scenario can be okay. used for the same to find minus standard cost when done. So click on it. So here, uh, it is how to click a plus now, fine. not coming at all. Click on search now. Fine. In one scenario, we can even have multiple items actually. Yeah. It's not coming, but the plus symbol is not coming. Oh God. Mm -hmm. so this has to be analyzed. One scenario, only one item. Oh God. Yeah, that will be not difficult. And no. It'll be fine. the plus symbol is not coming for the scenario at all. So somebody has to analyze it and then see now. Fine. Uh, why the plus symbol is not coming? Oh, let us now create a new scenario. I thought that it can be done, fine, but I am not aware of it. Yeah. Click on plus we can, or we can copy, duplicate it. Something. Yeah, yeah. Duplicate also is possible. Yeah. Duplicate also may be possible. Uh, I will not say uh, it is a four four itself. Item items name itself. I will not give on the scenario name. Uh, cost organization is data. Would have. And then here also data. Would have. And then the effective data. I am going to give it now. Today's date. I will not give a save and close and then add the item. These are all only for the manufacturing actually. Fine. Once only, I meant to learn this once only learned, I will not show you all the things in this place. So click on save and close. So the cost scenario is now complete. I will not query on the J10 and then I will not have 4-4 over here now. So where's the 4-4? I will not query on the 4-4. Second one, second one, second one. Second one, okay. Fine. Second one, yeah. one. I'll go there, click on it. I will not go to the manage cost manage standard cost for the item. Now go there, click on plus. This plus is coming there only as a new item. Mm, yeah. <laughs> we cannot have it for each item. Maybe yeah. there may be some profile options or something like that be there. I'm not sure about it. No, I will not add the cost. Mm. So click on plus now. And then whatever component we added, there only has to be an asset that point. And the item price, I'm going to Item price, click on okay. No. Not a, I will not say ten dollars is the unit cost. Is a cost. No, click on save and close, and then we'll now publish it. So the item cost is now created. So it is in process now. So you're going to publish it. Fine, give a what's called give it done and then come out of the main line now. Send cost is now done. The in process. You go there, click on it, it will now update the cost. So click on update standard cost that gets published. So click on submit. The profile is also changed. 950 on the concurrent is running now. So that will be ready. So in the meantime, what happens now? Go there and then we'll now create our purchase orders. I click on now, come out of it. Now we'll purchase order. And then follow the same process now. Fine, mm -hmm. This place, and then here I will now go to the purchase orders. So I'm go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders. <coughs> Click on create order for this one. So create order for this item. So supplier is Jaden. <coughs> so click on create. So I'm creating a purchase order for this four four item, the new item. Let me tell you, can now say it is no update standard causes no way. It got published. So, over this place, uh, and then here, any document, fine, go down and then click on the plus. No, fine, go to the lines region, and the plus will be coming. And the schedule is not back to the lines region. I will not give a plus. I will now populate the 4 4 item over here. Written, score, four, four. Quantities, and then I will not change the price to what 11.5. And what else? So it's not done. And then go to the schedules and then give a schedule.
Where should find that? So everything is now complete. 104 days, and then you must submit. And 11th purchase order is now getting created. So once you submit it, now go there and then receive it. Now go to review receipt. So uh, review receipt to connect. I will now change it. Click on the now. Will now receive and then deliver it also. Will it not? I will now go to the what's called. Uh, go to the supply chain execution and then we now go to the inventory and then go to the receipts. Drop it down and then change it to receipts now. The receipts and click on receive expected shipments on the 11th purchase order. 11 is the one thing give it up. It's coming fine. It is already approved. Thank you, consult now. Will now perform a receipt. Click on get receipt and make it now. So once when it goes to the next level, we'll now populate what our uh, quantity. Fine. That, that is a mistake which you made the last time now. So click on the show result quantity, it will not show you how much is going to be received. Click on get result. You're not trading it down. And then you'll not see. Not fast. Yeah, this is <laughs> so 1007 is the one fine for that point. And then now you know go there, click on down. And then we'll not deliver it. We'll not perform a put away also. Click on it, no perform a put away. 1007 is the JRN number. Yeah. And then click on search. We'll not perform a put away. Select and then click on put away. Then we'll put away now. <coughs> And then go there. Uh, no popular the subunitary, the one and only subunitary. Only, only, kanne, kanne. I have got only one. Put on it and click on submit. So it gets delivered now. Now we will now go there. This must have been completed. Now the update cost. Let us now transfer transactions to inventory cost. Transfer transactions will now see. Transfer another receiving cost. You will now run it. Transfer transactions to receiving cost. You will now run it. So we will now duplicate the concurrent actually. And there is no such parameters on this now. And transfer transaction receiving costing. Let me resubmit it actually. So select another. You are going to resubmit it. So this one. I will now resubmit it. The same parameters. Okay. Then click on this. So once when it is completed, we will also transfer transaction to inventory cost. Because we are not doing an item level, but we are doing at the cost org level only. So it doesn't matter. We can very well repeat it actually. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Had it been an item level, then uh, we have to run it again separately. But no completed. Go that mm -hmm. So we'll now go to the transfer transaction. The inventory costing will now repeat it actually. So click on resubmit it now. So all the parameters, fine. The argument is of the cost org actually. Find the cost org. Thing is okay. Thank you, Connest. So accept the argument and then submit it. That will be running. Now, let us now go on and create a receipt accounting. So, that is running now. So, transfer is running. Let us now perform a receipt accounting. Go to the home icon and then go there. Receipt accounting, I am going to find supply chain execution and go to the receipt accounting. Now go there. We will now stop at our distribution creation. So, create receipt accounting distribution. And over the GLP to distribute one. And then we need the BU number. We use a mandatory field and click on submit number, which the receipt accounting is now being created. 958 is the concurrent which is running. What is the place? And now 958 is the concurrent. So once it is completed, you can now see the receipt accounting will be hitting at the PO price actually. 958 is now passed and then on that number. So we'll now go to that what's called review receipt accounting distribution. We'll now query for the item. Item is J10. That's <coughs> 44 is the one. So let us see the monitoring of it with all the concurrence are getting completed or not. So create receipt accounting distribution will be spawning one more concurrent actually for the sub process. Receipt accounting sub process will be created. So there is it. So it says initially imported it from the interface table to the base tables of receipt accounting. And then afterwards it is now running the sub process for this now. Click on it. It is running. So we'll now go to this place, on this place, whatever they go there, and then uh, click on search, and then we'll now query for the 44th item. And item is what? J10 underscore 44. Uh, we have already given a, uh, what's called standard cost of 10 now. Go on and search for it now. So go there, nothing is available. So only when you create the distribution, the item will be, the thing will be available. So we'll now go there, and then have a look at the monitoring of this process now. So now all of them are almost completed. So it's all succeeded. We'll now go there with the review and then we'll now go on review. So receipt accounting will be hitting only at the PO price, whereas cost accounting has to hit only at the cost price. So previously it was also getting at the PO price because it was at what? At a perpetual average. Distributions of process we go down and then see the purchase order cost is 11.5. If you click on the distributions, you can now see the distributions which are getting it down. So you can see accrual is getting credited and then the inspection is now debited fine, as per the plan. So here, inspection is now debited and then accrual is credited. Now we'll now go to the 
cost accounting and then perform their cost accounting distributions. Click on the wrong. You will now go to the cost accounting and then perform the cost accounting distributions. You go to the shipping execution and go to the cost accounting. This time, the PPV has to come now. Muruga, give me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Great cost accounting. It will come. Yeah, yeah. So, J10. Let me that. I'm going to on search. Search for it. So, go there. Click on schedule new process. I will not schedule new process. This time, it has to come up. Click on search. So, 966 is the concurrent which is running now. Find that point. Now, have a so this concurrent will be taking a longer time. So let me take. In the meantime, what happens? I will not show you one more document on this document. So okay. for purchasing accounting. So if there is one document called 61th document is purchasing accounting. We'll have a look at it. Double click on it. So 61th document on additional four. So we have got three. We already got three additional threes. There will be full now. Additional four has got 61th document and double click on it. <coughs> so here procurement accounting has got three types. What are they? One is a purchasing accounting, one is a receipt accounting, and then one is a cost accounting. The purchasing accounting will be basically for monitoring your expenses on a category basis or on item basis or whatever it is. Right? So it has got five types of transactions: asset item into asset supplementary, expense into asset into expense, no fine, asset item into expense supplementary, expense into asset, expense into expense, no fine. These are the four major ones, and then afterwards non-inventory items, also known as non-catalog items. Fine. So these are five different types of uh, uh, purchase orders will be creating it. So uh, we can even monitor on this. So accrual, uh, there are two types of accruals. One is an asset accrual, one is an expense accrual. So these are the five types under the purchasing accounting. So they help you to, what happens, analyze the spend. It is mainly, mainly meant for what? Spend monitoring. You can primarily monitor your spends. So you will say, I'm not going to buy cement, sand, and then I'm cement, I'm issuing it for different, different projects actually. So project wise, uh, item wise, we can monitor the spend actually and then take an informed decision about whether it is worthwhile to go for a, let us say, I'm now building a house at every corner of the country, every one of the city actually. So every uh, house is a project. So project wise, you will understand about how much of cement you have consumed, how much of sand you have consumed by money wise, and then you can uh, do the monitoring of your spends actually. That is the main purpose of purchasing account. Fine. Spend monitoring is the main one. Of course, everything is going to push it into GL and then do take the financial ones. But from a procurement perspective, you will now analyze the spend on five different categories. So you can now do this category wise. Find the orders. So all these things are there for a construction on a weekly or a monthly basis. Spend reduction and spend optimization and or the ultimate purpose of a procurement module. And then uh, you are having a PR, SPO, CPA, BPA, and all, they're all add-on benefits. But the real benefit is what? Spend reduction and spend authorization, spend optimization. This purchasing accounting does it. Purchasing accounting is now going to help the purchasing managers to reduce the spend as well as optimize the spend actually. These are there. So they are all add-on benefits only. So they are not contributing the main benefit actually. This is the main benefit. Next is receipt accounting. So this concentrate primarily on accruals and huge accruals. Huge accruals may be because supplier has not sent an invoice for a small quantity. For example, your PO is for 1,000 quantity and then he has only invoiced 998. Afterwards, he has not invoiced at all. So that will be hitting the accrual. So we have to constantly monitor the accruals and then write off these accruals. Supply is affected, may lack quality, and so the user department might have instructed the payments department to stop future payments, basically. So let us say you stop 20% of the payment. So payables invoice, even though he has supplied for the full 100 quantity for the PO and the invoice, the payables clerk will now create an invoice only for 80 quantities. So 20 will be accrued. Fine, it is not at pay. And then they will now discuss the user department, and then they will now even write off the accrual actually if, uh, if they feel like not to pay. And you can even reverse it also. So we can even uh, accruals will be basically analyzed started on the high flow, and then uh, it will enable the procurement managers to analyze the reason for the accrual actually, find accumulation of accruals. If they feel that no more invoices to be created, they will not write it off, and then it's an expense account. They have the option to reverse also. Fine. They feel that now the supplier has now given an assurance that I will now uh, have the quality uh, what happens. Uh, uh, low stick to the quality from the next supplies owners. So the purchasing managers may even reverse the accrual rate of actually. So this is accounting largely concentrated on an accrual reconciliation rate off. Whereas purchasing accounting is mainly for spend reduction and spend optimization. The third type of accounting which takes place in is cost accounting. So this concentrate on product costing. This concept on product costing. It can cost the product by three many ways by standard cost, perpetual average, and actual cost. Fine. So this is the main advantage of a cost accounting. So we can perform cost adjustment. At any point, whenever you feel that any of them, so remember on a perpetual average, the cost is hitting zero because there is a concept called your average cost variance. Nobody knows this. 
Average cost, everybody says there's not be any variance, but there is a variance. Right? Four of my students in the past 10 years have reported that the average cost has hit zero. So I have given this document actually. This document explains the clearly about the average cost variance. <clears throat> there is a document here now. Where is the one? Actual standard cost in your purchasing accounting. Uh, EBIS, EBIS I have demonstrated in the EBIS actually. Fine. It is almost same. Fine. There is no change at all. EBIS average cost variance, we go there. There are seven scenarios which I have uh, what I have simulated and then demonstrated. It. Go there. So I will not issue five quantities. I have got around 10 quantities at 30. It has been received. So inventory valuation is what? 300 by 10. <clears throat> so inventory valuation on average costing is what? The total inventory value by total quantity. So it will be hitting this now. And afterwards, you will know the second scenario, five quantities at 40. This is from an Oracle white paper I have taken, and then I have done it. Now. And then I, there will be a cost history coming up now in the US. And then afterwards, I issue three firms, and then it will be hitting a minus 50. Now, so when it goes, it goes and then hit the variance. And then how this is analyzed, it has to be seen now. I mean, the managers. So here, what happens, you know, see the new cost is zero because of this now, fine. because of this issue, the new cost will be zero. So there will be so many scenarios. And then if you have to wait till that, what happens, if the transaction, either the quantity or the value comes above zero. So the new online quantity cannot be negative if the new quantity is positive. This is one. And then here, there is another scenario. Uh, likewise, it will be having multiple scenarios over here. So here, uh, inventory material value is credited till the quantity becomes zero. Up to the up to it becomes zero, it will be credited. And then afterwards, the cost will now start to increase. It's a very big concept, actually. So this has to be understood clearly. And then if the uh, end user department is uh, not happy with the zero cost, we can perform a cost adjustment and then bring it back to the no, values, whatever you want. Right? You can do it. So otherwise, if you wait for it, the system will automatically, when the situation reverses, the cost will be coming to the proper one. Fine, that is the best way. But if you cannot wait, let us say it is going to be zero on for many days, then you have to adjust it. We have to adjust it. Have to perform an adjustment. It's an excellent one. So in the bottom, I have given about the reasons for the costing. Actually, it is again Oracle white paper. So there are three many ways. Variance account is hit in three different scenarios. When quantity is driven negative during the, during the transaction, right? when the quantity goes negative. When the inventory value is driven negative during the transaction, then also it'll, variance will be hit. And then when the value is increased from a negative at a different transaction cost from a current average cost, then also the variance will be hit. So these are the three scenarios on which the variance will be hit. Right? And then approach me and then whenever you're having doubt, we'll sit and then we'll now have to decide upon the cost adjustment. Right? So the one, <coughs> the beautiful one. Now, I'll go back and then see, you know, fine. by this time, you would have got the yeah. accounting distribution created. You know, so, yes, I see average cost oh. is a very big one. You know, In some cases, it will be really, very, very boring. So, everything has got mm -hmm. considered. We'll now go there and then have a look at this. We'll give a saving close. Now, now, we'll now go on and review it. I won't have PPV coming up. Muruga, Muruga, give me PPV. So, give a review cost accounting distribution and then we'll now have a look at it. Item okay. Go there. The J42, yeah. 844 is the one. 44, one. yeah. You can search now. I want BPV. Go that one. So go there. Now, what happens is the cost variance is coming out. See, the cost variance is detected. So oh. the standard cost is ten dollars. The cost variance is one point five dollars on the cost and cost information. It is now okay. it, it, it now. And then if you go to the distributions, it will show you this variance is nothing but a PPV variance. So go to the cost distribution. You know, have a look at it. It's a PPV variance actually. So it's a purchase price variance that are now given. That's why. So if you go and see on the item cost, it will not show you only ten dollars. This is the one. So here, this is what it is happening. So the PPV has set actually in this place, and then the receiving inspection is coming. Now, when you account it, also what happens? Everything will be coming properly. <laughs> so the one fifty which has hit on the what's called the purchase value is is now getting relieved. Okay, is now getting credited, and then the receiving inspection is not this thing. So in this place, you will now see the receiving inspection gets knocked off basically. So here, there are two receiving inspections are coming up. One is on the purchase price variance as well as the receiving inspection. It is getting 1,150 and the receiving inspection is now getting split into two now. Right? That is 1,000 and then this 150 is now getting relieved because of what? Your PPV actually. So that way it's coming. So excellent. So let us now do the accounting also and then how it is now done. Right? We will now create accounting. So go with that. We will now create accounting. <coughs> So we are going to get according from it. So I'll now go to the cost management on this now. So go to this place. I will now choose what cost management. And then the ledger is J10. Hey, okay, Dallas man, you are if you are is very late, you can even leave now. Right? <laughs> I know that. No, I'm no problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can say yeah, almost done, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. So process fine. Well, then the detail of mine, I keep on submit now. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. 988 is the one just come there. Okay, yeah. 
So it is not running. So the purchase price variance is running. We'll now see the accounting also. Sure. Uh, one more mm -hmm. thing which I see is what uh, doing it on a Excel sheet actually. Let it run now. So we will not try to do it on an Excel sheet actually. Right? We will, will not go there. So we will mm -hmm. not try to go there and then uh, we will not go to the manage cost scenarios. Go there. We will not query out okay. scenario. But, so cost scenario, I'm going to query it. Fine. J10 underscore 44. We will not try to update mm -hmm. the cost on an Excel sheet. Right? Thank you for search now. Okay. So it's not coming. I will not go to the manage. Uh, Go to the managed standard cost on this stuff and click on the managed standard cost. Go there. So we have a managed spreadsheet. So let us know. Download it in the Excel sheet. Fine. The cost is only 10 now. Fine. So I'm going to update mm -hmm. the cost using a shift. If I click on the manage spreadsheet, I'm not going there. So it is not getting downloaded now. Manage spreadsheet. I click on show all and then I'll open it up now. So let me open it up. So once when you open up enable editing, and then it will ask me to go for the login actually. If I click on S now, the login, I'm going to give it. So let me give the login credentials for this one. <clears throat> so we'll now give the username, so JTEN underscore EMP1, and then I will now pass, pass the password actually. So click on sign in, it will be going into the system and then it will now come in. <clears throat> it will now come over here. It's not awesome. So now I have to make a search for this one. Right, what it is. So click on search, I will not wait. Right? Click on search. It will now processing, processing is now coming. Oh, nothing is coming. So, okay, let me put the scenarios over here. J10 underscore 44. Go there. So, cost organization is what? Uh, J10 underscore cost underscore org. Cost book is J10 underscore cost book. Cost book. And item is J10 underscore 44. The valuation unit. We'll now go on and see. Click on it. We'll now have a look at the valuation unit now. Where is the one? Ah, uh, not this one. No. Uh, this one. 10, yeah, it is valuation is what? J10 asset value. Unit. Asset value. Yeah. I will not put J10 asset value unit. J10 underscore JSS asset underscore value underscore unit. Fine. I given everything. Right? Import status. Uh, I don't know what exactly it is. Right? So let us now click on search. No, fine. I given many, many information. We'll not search. We will not see whether it's coming or not. It is processing, processing. Oh, nothing is coming. Batch ID, what is this batch ID? I don't know. What are the import status? I don't know. So somebody has to make an R&D and then see, I'm not able to get it. So let us now create a new standard cost for the import standard cost. So this is for the errors actually. If you go and then see the status now, point click on the status, no errors are there. The status mm -hmm. is what no errors. Okay, it's not importing at all. There's no mistake. There is no mistake now nah? here in this place. The yeah, there's no mistake, yeah. Import status, I have to write as what published or what? Because this is no published cost now, fine. This is a published cost. So let me put as published now, fine. P U B E L I S H E D. There and then click on search now. Come on, come on, come on. Nothing is coming here. I have to get the scenario item, variance, everything is coming. So let us now go to the create standard cost and let us now create it now. The create cost. I go there. So scenario, I go there. I will now say J10 underscore 44. Go there. So cost organization is not coming over here. This is all grayed out. That means what it has already taken it actually. Fine, go there. So uh, item number, item number is what? J10 underscore 44, go there. Valuation unit, I will now say J10 underscore uh, asset underscore value underscore unit, go there. Go further, go further, nothing is coming in of him. I have to give the total unit cost now. Come on, it is all grayed out. How to do it here? Unit cost is coming here. I will now say it is a $12, 12 12.01, I will now give it. I am not putting the final. So cost element. I think cost cost element. Yeah. yeah. Cost J10 element also. Item price. I will not give the item price. JTM is JTM underscore item price actually. Oh God. They started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, let us know. Go there and correct me error actually. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I think you have to delete it. Uh, search and select. Okay, man. It's not asking me to yeah. do the mistake. So it is not asking me to search and select. Actually. So it's mm -hmm. not asking me to search and select. I will not choose the appropriate one for that. So this is one selected and then click on select now and JTM item price is now selected. You know, come back to that. So here 12.01 and 12.01 I have given now for the 200. So shall I create it now? Anything else is there? And let us now go and then create it and then see now. So 12.01 and go there. Uh, nothing else is nothing. This many expense pool is not required. So let us now go there and then we will now upload it now. We will now see whether it uploads or not. So this many there. So there is a change also is not showing when click on upload. 
proceed. Okay, click on okay now, fine. There's no browsing, uploading changes, nothing like that. You cannot perform the operation on the record because the scenario is published. Oh God. Oh, but oh. only if it is not published, we can do it now. Oh, that is why he's not even yeah. searching it actually, maybe. Yeah. So that, uh, how to unpublish it now? If it is a published, you cannot do anything at all. Define in cost accounting. Oh God. That is what <laughs> is in the managed spreadsheet. Only for the things which are not published only can be spread on the done this. Only. There is a reason that yeah. it is not also coming on the, uh, on the other one. Fine. Import. Right. Okay. So you learned something. Hmm. So somebody please make an experiment and then uh, before it, what happens, you create via spreadsheet, you upload the cost. Now, fine. That I can. So I'm asking all the students, what happens? I, I updated the cost straight away. So through this, what happens? You fill up everything and then uh, you, uh, what happens? Good upload. And then if it uploads, you please uh, put a message in the groups that we are going to succeed on this. And uh, that's it for me. Fine. <clears throat> Anything else? Sure. So, Jay? No, no, I think this is good. Thank you, Nana. Thanks a lot. So yeah. Oh, every, yeah. Everybody can see the recording. It will help for them exactly. also. So in the spreadsheet one, we failed because the published cost cannot be again right. published. It's fine. Right. Actually, they should disable the flag. If it is published uh -huh. deadline, then the managed spreadsheet should be disabled. But exactly. yeah. some, some fine tuning is required. And then we are unable right. to support a standard cost. That also because it's published, we are unable to do anything at all in this place. Maybe. That may be so some lab exercise for you on the spreadsheets basically if anybody succeeds you can do it otherwise sure. the remaining are all okay fine. i made a mistake and then i corrected it thank you mm -hmm. perfect thank you yeah thanks a lot bye-bye thank, thank you bye-bye